So, but how the next question would be how do we store and protect all of the sensitive data that is collected in various uh, repositories and other places? So, to answer that question, we're going to turn our attention to and welcome on board Gry Her Henriksen from the Norwegian Centre for Research Data, who will be talking to us about how the CESDA Data Management Expert Guide can guide uh, researchers on storing and protecting data that is highly sensitive, as in the case of cancer and chronic diseases. So you can, you feel free. Yes, here we go. Um, so the floor is yours then, Gry. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. I will start with a short introduction um, to the uh, Data Management Expert Guide. It is a guide for researchers with lots of information on how to manage their research data. It is one central place for information on research data management, and it is created by the SESTA training team from 2017 to 2020, and it is still being updated um, up to today. It is free of use. Uh, you can find it in the SESTA uh, pages. Um, it is mainly for, for uh, new researchers, but you can also find lots of information and tips and uh, more links and more documentation in the guide, even if you are an experienced researcher. The DMEG follows the data life cycles. That means that you will find information on all the stages in a research project. So you can see how you can manage your data throughout the data life cycle. And when we are talking about the data life cycle, this implies that the data, research data, lives on. It is not like they get less and less valued the more you use it. And you can also see here that my talk today will be about the store and protect phases of um, of the data life cycle and the DMEG. So data storage, where can you store your data? Do you store it on your hard drive, in the cloud service, research server, or your laptop? This is questions that the data um, management expert guides kind of show you the pros and cons on how to store your data. What kind of requirements do your institution have? Do your funding have some kind of requirements? So all these are questions that you have to be aware of when you are going to store your data. And how about backups, access restrictions, software mal malfunctions, and data integrity? Are you storing your data, for instance, in your laptop? Are you taking some backups? Do you have some backup routines if you store your data like that? Do you have access restriction, for, it, for instance, if you use a, a research server? Do your institutions provide you with a research server where you could store your data? And do you have some kind of restriction on access? Can, for instance, everybody uh, affiliated with the project, can they upload data? Can they also delete data? And how about data integrity? Do you have some kind of checksums when your data is stored? And when we are talking about storage of data, that is the process when you are still working with your data. So you are analyzing, you are organizing, you are doing things with your data when you store them. And that means that you also, if you have collaborators in that uh, project, they can also kind of add, delete, and edit data. So you need some kind of uh, routines on how to, to, um, to handle that. And also with backups. Are you certain that the, uh, you have backups? Are they stored, for instance, a secure place? And software malfunctions. So if you have, for instance, you are using one program software, and there is an upgrade. How are you supposed to transport your data from one upgrade to another one? And if you use uh, another software and they have a problem 
some things happens, maybe the, the data will be destroyed. Do you have some checksums? Do you know that the data you are working on are the same data you uploaded? Have anybody in the project been into it and maybe edit some data? And we also know that we changed our data. So when you are organizing and when you are analyzing, you may use uh, indexes, for instance, like the last speaker was talking about. She had made indexes. So how are you going to keep track on how to, to um, document this? Which kind of data do you have? And when we are talking about data protection, that's a legal and ethical obligation to your participants. And you must upheld this scientific standards. That means that you have to have, for instance, a purpose. You have to have a scientific aim for your project. Uh, and you have to be in compliant with the law. So that means that you have to have, uh, for instance, consent if you are collecting personal data. Have you asked for the consent for the participants? So you cannot collect data or handle data that you are, do not have the legal basis to have. And you also have to avoid it of social and personal harm. So that means you have to be aware that are you collecting data that in some way can harm your participants? For instance, are you collecting data of sensitive, um, like sensitive data? And you know that they live in a society where this data may be dangerous for them. So then you have to protect that data in a special way and you have to protect your participants. And there are also the ethical review process. Ethical reviews may be done by ethics committees. Uh, this is uh, dif different in the different uh, nationalities or different countries. So you have to be aware what kind of regulation is in your country. And you have the ethical self-assessment. That's, um, you have to ask yourself a couple of questions. Um, what are the methods you are going to use? What are the aim of your project? And also, do you really need to have personal identifiable data, for instance? And also, can this data that you collect be dangerous for the participants you are collecting data from? Rules and guidelines will differ, differ from country to country, as well as from research funders and different research funders. So you have to check, you have to be aware of what kind of regulation there is in your country and also in your research. Do the funders of your research, do they have some rules and guidelines? So, and you can find lots of information about this, of course, in the data management guide. When we are talking about data protection, we cannot not talk about the GDPR. It's, um, it came in, in uh, 1918 and it is regarding personal data of EU citizen. It, the purpose of the GDPR was to give us more and better control over our own personal data. And it was also aiming to make it easier to share data between countries. But of course, this can be still a little bit difficult because you do not only have the GDPR, but you also have national law on data protection. For instance, in Norway, we have our national law on top of the GDPR that in some case can make data sharing more diffi difficult than it was kind of expected. So, and there is two approaches regarding uh, data protection and personal data. And that is, do you really need to have personal data? Can you, for instance, collect anonymous data? Do you need to identify one unique person in your data material? And if you do, 
you can also anonymize your data before you, for instance, store them or archive them. So you have to think ahead. Do I really need this data? And you also have to, to prepare. What kind of legal basis do I need to be able to collect and store this data? And last, plan ahead. In the data management, management expert guide, you will find lots of questions and checklists for data management plan. A data management plan is a useful tool to plan ahead, to think ahead, to ask the questions in all the points in the data lifecycle, but especially in storage and protecting. Because then you can see already in the beginning of your project, what kind of storage facility do you need? What kind of protection will your data need? So you can plan ahead, you can contact the IT departments, you can give everybody in the project information about how to do this. And the data management experts guide will give you lots of information about how to do this. Pros and cons, for instance, regarding storage uh, medium. And also what kind of regulation do you have for protecting data, the different nationalities, and the different countries regulation. So I will strongly suggest that haven't you been and seen and checked out the data management expert guide, I would definitely recommend you to do that. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Gray. I think that was very interesting to understand also uh, the, the vast amount of information that these European data experts have collected over the, over the three years that, that this, this, this work took. Uh, they are, uh, they are the, the experts that deal with this on a daily basis and that have collected all the information on the European diversity that you showed, on the ethical review process, well, everything you need to know about the data protection and the GDPR. I think that was really interesting to see. Uh, thank you for that, Gray.